And three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Scrack Gamers. This episode sponsored by, surprise, surprise, Zen Real Clothing Co. Just pick up your tees and hoodies and other apparel at zenrealclothingco.com. Use offer code SGPODCAST for 20% off select items. Okay, this is Cratic Dialogue. This week we're talking about mm, peering behind the veil. So, um, that... So I don't know if you actually know, but the the whole idea behind Zen Real is that you like you like keep things as real as possible, mm-hmm. right? Like from the perspective, of like I w- I was told this once where it's like, oh, you're very Zen Real, and I was like, oh, what does that mean? And it's like you you look at the honest truth behind something, even if it's cold. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's why I like the the whole name Zen Real, but um, it has a lot to do with peering behind the veil so there's like a lot of things in society that we like look at from like a first glance perspective and we're like oh this is this looks really awesome you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and then like when you when you look behind the veil you see like the wizard of oz pulling the strings you know you're like oh this is actually how it works and it's Mm -hmm. like not not how we thought it worked it's marketed to be like favorable yeah you know what i mean uh so i saw was that movie the one with the broadcasters. Mm-hmm. Um, do you remember the name? Damn, I'm lost. Oh, uh, Bombshell? Oh, Bombshell, thank you. Even I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, you didn't, but I, I can't remember the <laughs> title name. Uh, so Bombshell was basically about Fox News and how like a lot of um, anchors and stuff, there's like, a lot of sexual harassment, Yeah. right? And uh, I think you were saying something about Fox News, like how they chose they're like if uh if they put on mute oh uh yeah i mean like to see it's still entertaining to watch when um like they all have to have skirts or something like that yeah they brought that up in the movie but they they didn't do that thing you said where like they put mute if they put if it's on mute and it still grabs your attention right that's yeah, yeah. The thing. basically they have to look good on screen yeah that, that's, that's he was he was saying a lot of that there was like a lot of evidence of that in the movie and like uh and like so a lot of the anchors they're made to wear like dresses or skirts sorry and like wear makeup and like look really pretty you know to be on tv yeah and like uh it, it like follows the story of this one anchor person who well three technically and like one of them actually like went through the trials of like the sexual misconduct Mm -hmm. uh and the other two they both said no to him but like yeah yeah um so basically basically in order to get ahead like his tagline was like in order to get ahead you have to give a little head Uh right (laughs) and like so like this one girl she was like she like admitted to doing it etc etc and it's like that is actually a lot of how even though it was a movie that's a lot of how you know the media actually works Mm -hmm. you know we we don't know the favors that go behind the scenes or like it's like when you have that much power right it's difficult like it's that line right the power corrupts or something it's like oh uh power corrupts absolute absolute power power corrupts absolutely so it's like when they have too much power and they're in such high positions that they can control people. See, that's what I was positions. wondering about. So, like, I don't know if everyone does that, but like, no, totally, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but, but I'm wondering, like, is this a genetic thing? Because, like, back then, like, you'd have like emperors doing similar things. Yeah, you know. So it's like only now in this age of like morality that we see it as like a negative thing. I was watching this interview, and they're saying like having multiple wives doesn't jive with like the European view. Of yeah. conduct, but like in many cultures and historical places yeah. around the world, it's like that was totally normal. Mm-hmm. You know, not to say like what he did was like a good or bad thing, but it's like you can see that there are like flaws behind like what we initially see. Yeah, you know, we're like we're watching like the fall. Fo- oh, another funny thing is like they're saying like the way they choose their stories is like if it would outrage your mother or like freak out your father or something like that and like remember i told you i went to new york and i was at the fox news building and it said like beware of mexican werewolves and i was like <laughs> is this a joke like what's going on like yeah. are they trolling right now and it was like no they they look for like things that are so ridiculous to keep your attention because it's all about attention yeah. like selling ads and stuff yeah. right so yeah but so selling we, ads yeah but like 
when when so, so when something like this happened, I think it was like to Bill O'Reilly or one of those other people. Oh yeah, he he was that, caught for sexual yeah, misconduct. Yeah, but he, once that happens, you end up losing all your advertisers too. Right. Totally. Totally. So, totally. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, as long as we can keep the boat rocking, it's all good, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Which is like sad, but it's surprising that that's how this works. Because like. You know, like when you're a kid, you're like, I want to be an actor and stuff like that. Well, I never wanted that, but like you hear that mm -hmm. all the time. Like people are like, I want to be an actor. I want to be famous, right? And it's like, you don't really know what the price of fame is. You know? Right, yeah. Like a lot of things, when you when you get behind it, it's not as glamorous as it seems, mm -hmm. you know? And almost like makes you feel like humans are very bumbling in that way. We're like very confused and like we we call this structure, but we don't. It's not really structure. It's just like stuff that's been built up over time, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like if you if you look historically at how things were made, it's like you'll see that one thing led to another. It wasn't like a grand design. It was like a yeah, like a happenstance. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, another thing uh, that I found pretty interesting is I was watching this other interview with Nick Cannon, and he was talking about uh, actors' pays. Yeah. And he's like, you see like a lot of actors in like TV and stuff, and you're like, oh, they're like they must be balling out because like they're they're actors on TV. They have like a series, right? Mm. But like in between the shows, like some of them would get like jobs at like the grocery store. Uh, yeah. I mean, depend. Was he talking about like big roles or like your lead roles or uh, all that? We we just perceive that if you're on TV, you must be like rich and famous. Oh yeah. Not you know, you, like you must know everyone in Hollywood, et cetera, et cetera. Oh no, like, no, no. But that's that's like right, the, the perception, right? right? You're like, oh, you've broken into that industry, but it's like you don't know if you're gonna have to like wait tables or something in between mm -hmm. your big break. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's true. I mean. Uh, yeah, that, with TV, it's very difficult. Like when, even when you get a gig, it's like it's not. Uh, these don't last long. Yeah, yeah and, and you're saying much like money. pilots. There's like so many pilots. Yeah, so there's like exactly there's a lot of pilots made, but a lot of pil uh, a lot of pilots don't go fully through to a season. So, and you know that's also up to studios, like if it's a good show or not. And you, you can see that too. I and mean, it's very there's not a lot of good shows that come out throughout the year, right? Right, yeah. Totally, so it's totally. like there's many that are done, but many that are canceled. And yeah. many that don't even ever get made into a full season. So a lot of those actors are, end up, you know, not having anything for another, until they find another gig, I guess. It, it's sort of like um, the people um, in the Twilight series, right? Mm -hmm. The Twilight series was so big, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, it ended, and it's like you don't really see these actors doing anything anymore. Like, obviously, like, the two main stars, like Robert Pattinson and... Kristen Stewart yeah. they're still doing stuff they're like trying to do stuff but like um, one of them was Ashley Green mm -hmm. and she was in this movie Bombshell but like and then she was at a red carpet interview and she was saying like yeah you know it's important for us to like make this movie blah blah, blah like open awareness and then like I was like okay she's gonna have a role she didn't have a single speaking part they like showed her I think like maybe she said like one word mm -hmm. she had like one scene and it was like oh so that's that another thing. So no, 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 but sometimes what happens also in movies is you might have a full scene, but it might just get be cut if it doesn't fit. Oh, I see, I see. So that also happens. So sometimes there's it's a little awkward though because it's like you did a full interview, like right before yeah, the movie. She, yeah. did, I saw like the interview thing because they were playing like you yeah. know like red carpet stuff yeah. like in, prior to the movie, and then like she had like no real role. Right. But it seemed like she was gonna have a big role in it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Like we we're we're quickly amazed and we quickly forget. Mm -hmm. You know, like when Twilight came out, everyone's like so amazed. Like, oh wow, like these actors are amazing. You know, they must make lots of money. And then like we quickly forget about them. And then if they don't save their money correctly, yeah, dries up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure. Like, like for me, I at least hope that like they had like they're smart and they have like trust trusts and stuff and like mm -hmm. you know like mutual funds or something like to put their money into mm -hmm. but like you hear a lot about like like mike tyson he blew all his money yeah yeah right. it's like as quickly as it comes as quickly as it goes you know nobody's like exempt from uh 
failure, not failure, but like being tossed aside like trash, Mm -hmm. you know, but we don't think about these things is what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Oh, which actually makes me think of like comedians. So like I saw Mm. a comedian, a comic uh, show yesterday and like, it's it's pretty funny because like during the whole set, they were saying how like these people, the comics don't make any money. Yeah. Like they make maybe like if they if they're lucky like a thousand dollars a year doing their sets right and like again you're in front of all of us entertaining us but you don't have Mm -hmm. an adequate means for living yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. it's kind of weird like that bit makes sense again it's these sort of things are generally i think designed to be very difficult at first and or maybe forever for that person like in the sense that in order to be really, really good, you really got to, like... Grind? Yeah. yeah but see, we're, we're looking at, like, the few and the far between. We're looking yeah. at the Kevin Hart's, the, like, Joe Rogan's, Exactly, right? yeah. These and we're like, made it, yeah. But, like, of that one, how many, like, thousands have not Don't, made it? Exactly, you know? exactly. And that's the thing that we tend to forget. That it's not easy to get into these sort of things. And it's a lot of work to get into these sort of things. And, like, what, what did you have to sacrifice? Not just, like, time, but, right. like, just, like... The bombshell movie like what did you have to do to get yeah. that role you yeah. know like we don't know yeah and and we tend to forget that because we only see the people that are successful it totally totally and even the ones that are perceived to be successful mm-hmm. like the headliner right oh you're headlining the show he's an uber driver right he's like oh i also drive uber and right. i was like is this a joke but i'm like i don't think it's a joke like i think you're actually being serious right now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know he he said he has like a billboard at young and eglinton Okay. And like he was a just for laughs like headliner as well. So mm-hmm. it's like, okay, you, you must make some money, but let's say you're driving Uber still. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like you, it's. You really need like a constant thing because these right. are very, uh, like each show is what you're getting paid, but you got to do it constantly. And it's like a one off. Like if you take a vacation, that's no money. Yeah. You know, like streamers, right? Mm-hmm. We, we were talking about that other one where yeah. like, um, yeah, streamers can make like a lot of money. But like you can't take a vacation, yeah, because you'll see a dip in your subscriber count. Like mm-hmm. people will forget about you. But it's, it's true though. Like I even see to myself, you yeah. know, like Ghost Robo. Remember that guy? Like I don't know what he's doing now, but like I was a huge fan, right? I mm-hmm. like watch all his all his episodes, et cetera, et cetera. But like you just kind of get bored, you move on, and it's like if your only source of income is that one thing, it's like. Yeah. What are you yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the thing with, with what streamers do. They don't just do it only for that. If they're big enough, they can get sponsors. Right. And that's also where they're getting paid, right? Totally. So, um, but yeah, it is not a generally not a good... Um, if, if, you're six, if you are like one of the successful ones, then it's fine. But like if you're doing this every day, but you're not getting like a constant... Uh, uh, pool of money yeah it's like... yeah it's it's yeah yeah it's very difficult if you can't get sponsors and stuff it's going to be difficult to go ahead with it, those sort of things it almost seems unless like... you're doing it for a hobby like you have another job and totally yeah yeah totally. um just blaze he was like this uh producer as a musician and he said like he didn't quit his day job mm-hmm. he was making like six to seven thousand dollars per track that he'd like sell to someone but mm-hmm. he still had a full-time job right right because he's like i don't want to be one of those people that like come and go Mm -hmm. you know and then like if this goes away like selling beats like what what am i gonna do Mm -hmm. right and like he he said the only reason why he quit is because his boss forced him to quit he's like he's like why are you still here and he's like oh because you know i need Mm -hmm. money for like rent like this is not stable etc etc and then like the boss was like the the time you spent here is taking away from the time you'd be creating why don't you just try that you know so he's like all right fine i'll quit right but like you need to move like smart. Like yeah. we, we have these idealisms, you know, of like of like what what would what it could be like and how it would work. But then the reality situation situation hits you and you're like, oh, I need to be pragmatic. Mm-hmm. You know, from like from like a personal perspective too. It's like I thought you know teaching yoga and martial arts was going to be like the way, and you realize like you really make no money unless mm-hmm. you hustle. And the only people that really make the money are the studio owners, right? Right, because yeah. like they're they're just paying you like an hourly rate, mm. but like how much are those memberships? Yeah. You know, right. And at the same time, like those studio owners, like how many memberships do you have? Enough? Does that enough to offset your rent costs? Mm-hmm. Like everything's like a domino effect. Yeah, you know, like when you really understand how these things work, it's like 
you could see the Wizard of Oz playing out, you know? It's like right. we, like from the outward, like I remember when I was teaching martial arts, everyone was like, oh man, you're like, you're living the life, you're a martial artist, you know, mm-hmm. you get to like wake up and do martial arts, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, you're making like seven times more than me per month. Right. You know? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't know it. You mm-hmm. just think my life is sick, you know? It's behind the veil. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which actually... Uh, so one of my one of my previous goals was, was like, oh man, I want to like train somebody to go to UFC. Yeah. Right. Like, remember we were talking about that before. Yeah, yeah, then we yeah, went yeah. to go watch a UFC match, and it was like, dude, these this is like actual cockfighting. Like, there's no gl- glamour at the show. <laughs> Only on TV it looks glamorous, mm-hmm. but then like when you're actually at the show, it's like it's silent, mm-hmm. and then you just have a bunch of like fans that are shouting stuff that like has nothing to do with the fight. Right. You know, it's like. Oh, beat him up! You're like, well, that's not good advice. You know, like obviously you want to beat him up. You know, like yeah. the fans don't even know they're just, they're just out there to see blood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, that's like the oldest thing in the book, though, right? To- yeah, to- yeah, totally. It's like gladiators. Yeah, but then you wonder, it's like who's making all the money? Because mm-hmm. if like like somebody's making money, mm-hmm. you know, but it's obviously not the fighters. And then reading like the books of like fighters, they actually make no money. Like. Conor McGregor's book I read, GSP's book I read, and like you need sponsorships, and only the top, the cream of the crop make the money. Yeah, but before it was different, right? Isn't that before nobody made money? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. actually nobody made money. But it was a bit more because nobody, almost everyone wasn't nobody. Oh, what do you? Oh, okay, generally. Oh well, they made like three thousand dollars a year. Oh, oh, that's not yeah anything. Like, yeah, because they would fight like once, maybe twice a year, so you're making right. six thousand. Like, I don't know. That's, I think that's, that's looking at the ROI of that. <laughs> it's like you know, you work out so many hours that to- uh, totally. you get um, out of a. Faraz Sahabi said this in the interview. He, like the reason why he went to become like a gym owner instead of a fighter is because like he was training this guy, and like he trained so hard. This mm-hmm. guy spent like so much money, and like he won the fight, but he chipped his tooth, right? So like. He won three thousand dollars for the fight, but the dentist bill was like four thousand. Mm. So he's like, "We won this, but we're in the hole." Right. So what's the point? Yeah. You know. Mm. I guess like they really gotta love fighting. Yeah, if that's something, yeah, I think so. I think there has to be some some of that that kind of level. There but has to be there. but see, that's what that's the story they tell you, right? It's like you gotta love fighting, but for me. What I think it really is, is like you can't do anything else but fight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like people are like, oh man, I got no other option. Like if you actually listen to what these fighters are saying, like if you listen to their interviews, like they don't have any other means to get a job right. outside of fighting. So of mm-hmm. course they're going to tell you like, like my whole life is fighting. Because it's like, yeah, right, you have like neck right, tattoos, right. bro. Like you have no degree. Mm-hmm. Then what are you going to do? Right. You know? Hmm. Right, like yeah, that's true. Then what else do you have? For them? The gym owner is making money because he's charging you a membership. Mm-hmm. But again, it's like it's not the fighter, but the gym owner. But we we glamorize like the fighter, and then the fighter has to like spend their money if they're like if they're in the UFC and they don't get paid that much. But they're like on the main card. You have to look cool, right? So I got to buy a new suit, right? But then how am I going to pay for that suit? Mm-hmm. You know, sure sponsorship deals, but it's like how many fighters are there? You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like an illusion. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, th- you know, you can, but you do tell, like, generally, like, when they do those ads for the UFC, you're only looking at the main, uh, the, the main people. Main people. And then, like, especially the, the prelims, you're like, dude, like, you're, you're definitely making nothing mm-hmm. as a prelim fighter. But, like, as a prelim fighter, you're hoping to get onto the main card. Right, but then the main card that's when you make like like fifteen hundred dollars a fight, mm-hmm. you know, but like you spent the whole year training for this, you know, pro nutrition, classes, <laughs> rent, groceries, yeah, yeah, I mean, like think about all those things that you're spending in a year, and it's like, is it worth it, you know, mm-hmm. Demetrius Johnson, like the arguably the greatest of all time, uh he like he just moved. Um, from UFC to 1FC because he's like, I want to get a belt and everything. But
but like any every division but like in his interview with joe rogan he was working in a factory while he was fighting for the belt because mm-hmm. he's like i can't support anything yeah like, like, yeah that's right you know what i mean it's yeah. kind of sad mm-hmm. but like commendable because i think it's the american dream you know we're all like we're all like we can make it one day or it's that illusion of this idea of that's what i'm saying it's like we're being sold yeah. yeah right yeah totally yeah and i feel like the veil is the marketing mm-hmm. right it's like the veil of like vanity like you could be this mm-hmm. you know how it's being sold to you portrayed mm-hmm. right you know uh, another interesting thing that I found, uh, Claus, well, I was listening to uh, Drake's Rap Radar. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, what I think is really cool is what's, he lives What's that in, Rap Radar? It's like an interview show on Tidal. Okay. Uh, Jay-Z's like music industry like thing, okay. platform. Um, yeah, but so, so I think it's cool like, well, one, he lives like one exit off of us. <laughs> okay. And like, I'm like, that's, that's kind of cool because you're like, he was talking in the interview about like Young and Eglinton. Like he was like, "Oh, I, I used to take people to like girls to like Young and Eglinton. And I eat at the Pickle Barrel, and I drive around um, the bridal path and be like, I'm gonna live here one day." And like mm-hmm. his name and all these streets. I'm like, dude, I know all these places. Like I work at Young and Eglinton, dude. Like that's sick, right. you know. And like it, it was humanizing, mm-hmm. you know. And then like it made me want to listen more to his interview and like he was being very honest and human in it Mm -hmm. and what he's saying is like you know what we see in the rap industry is not real like for for example Mm -hmm. like um he he was a big fan of pusha t because he's like oh man pusha t selling all this cocaine out here blah blah blah. and then he said like when he actually he actually met pusha t and like learned more about him he's like oh this is an illusion he's like you're seeing the magic trick that's going on and it like kind of disappointed him Mm -hmm. you know but it's like but that's how it is you know like we were sold this vision again right, right of like things being awesome and like they're not really you know mm-hmm. and it must be so isolating like imagine having all that money but like you can't go outside because you're so famous you know what i mean like his house that he built for himself. Yeah. It's like he's saying like, oh, I, yeah. I live in this house that's like so grand and like I have my studio here. I have a personal chef. But it's like, it sounds more like you're a prisoner of your own like rich. Yeah, business. success. Or whatever, you're you're yeah. a prisoner of your own success. Because yeah. like you made all this money and you built this amazing like place, but you can't leave it. That's generally like the complaint that a lot of them have. Like, that they just can't walk around like normal folks anymore. And totally, they're, they're but they are normal there. folks. That's the thing. We, yeah. we look at them but like godly. Miss, yeah, yeah. Like Dave Chappelle, he left to go to South Africa. I'm like, why do you choose South Africa? He's like, nobody knows who I am there. Mm-hmm. It's like, I could be a normal person again. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, that, that's what it is when they go to these different countries. That's They do like that aspect of not being noticed. <laughs> yeah, that's what they all crave, right? It's like, yeah. like they missed the one thing that was when you're just a normal person yeah totally so and it's so funny because like this is like the whole zen parable of like you go searching in your life for something only to realize like what you were searching for was you the whole time yeah right like like when you go on search it's like it was here the whole time mm-hmm. that's what i really wanted and like um i was listening to this outcast uh not outcast andre 3000 and rick rubin interview yeah and they're talking about how like they worked so hard because they had a hole to fill right they're like if i just become rich and famous i'll fill this hole and then like they're saying how they they got their call from these managers and it's like you have the number one record in like the world right now how do you Mm -hmm. feel and they're like i feel the same like nothing happened right and it's like that's the illusion again we we get we get deluded into thinking that there's something that could fix us outside of ourselves right you know i read this really good book once it's called uh, wherever you go there you are Mm -hmm. and like basically it's like about people who like try and escape their problems by going somewhere else right only to realize that like their problems haven't left them they're still with them Mm -hmm. you know Mm. because the hole you're trying to fill is like is an innate hole right yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah yeah it's weird yeah and then <laughs> and then i just saw another interview with like this other guy who's saying like how come rappers like they have the money phone money phone so like What's they that? they 
they have like stacks of cash and they pretend like it's an old brick phone. Oh. You know those pictures, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, the real rich people, you'll never see a photo like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Because it's only the rappers that are trying to like prove something to you, like, look how much money I have. And they were going through like people's net worth and was like, okay, Floyd Mayweather makes like two hundred million dollars, but then like the guy who owns this shoe company online, his net worth is like billions. Uh, no, no eight hundred million, and he only owns four pairs of shoes because mm. he's like, well, why do I, why do I need more than that? Yeah, you know. But it's like then you get like Floyd Mayweather being like, look at my closet filled with shoes, and it's like, dude, you gonna wear all those? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. That point is no, generally no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. It's the you'll stick to the couple that are the most comfortable. That's what you would wear every day, right? And it's the presentation. It's like let yeah. me just make you believe I'm something I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Because I have a hole that tells me I'm not worthy. So if I make you think I'm worthy, mm. then at least one of us is satisfied. Right. You know what I mean? Like because yeah. I'm not satisfied. Mm. Yeah. Maybe that's the biggest veil of all to realize, like, you know, that you're the source of your own pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess so. Bring it on our own selves. Because you could see, like, you go to, like, not as rich countries, and then, like, you're like, they're so much happier than we are mm -hmm. because they're content with what they have, whereas we're always striving for something more. Yeah. You know? Right. I mean, they sell us, sell it to us in a way, right? Totally, we yeah. Just keep thinking that that's what we all want. Yeah. And we fall for that, and then we don't realize the consequences of that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, speaking of consequences, it's funny with the uh, uh, the video game industry. Mm -hmm. With, like, their crunch time. Or, right. like, what would you call it? Yeah, crunch time. Oh, crunch time. So, they're all, like, certain companies are always in crunch time. So, like, crunch time is basically, like, where you... You work like 14 hours a day yeah because you're trying to meet a deadline yeah or like all day you just sleep there <laughs> yeah that's see that's another one like i always wanted to work in the video game industry and then like hassan minaj played that like he had that episode about the video games and i was like oh that would actually suck yeah that's why i think that's what i kept telling you i was like i don't think i'd want to work in the industry I, just I like, like what they're doing. I know, right? It's crazy. I, I'm not gonna work the way that they're working see even on like even on that baser level of like okay let's just look at something like as innocuous as video games or like mm. entertainment you know like we don't know what it's like i guess the i guess the primary takeaway is you'll never know what it's like until you go do it but don't be surprised if it's not what you wanted the whole time well it's like this so the like with the video game industry it's somewhat like a new kind of thing it's like all the other industries when they were new they also faced the same problem Okay, yeah, no regulation. Yeah, and then now we've got regulations. Now we have weekends. Now we have like these sort of right, things that right, 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 right. weren't ever there before. And um, so maybe eventually that'll happen to video games too. I think it's going to be inevitable to have yeah, totally. to go that way. Yeah, you know, I I feel like the only way to achieve like like f like freedom. Not like, nothing's really free, but like the closest thing to freedom is to like start it yourself. Because like, if you go on this search and you're like, okay, I like mm -hmm. I want this, right? And then you go get it, and you realize it's not what it's cut out to be. Mm -hmm. You should just start it for yourself. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, like let's just do the martial arts example. So it's like, oh, I want to like, you know, be a martial artist. Mm -hmm. And like teach these people and then you realize like martial arts instructors get paid like jack like they get nothing right as compared to the studio owners right so it's like why don't you just open up your own studio and then pay correctly mm -hmm. you know or pay like an amount that people can live off of right you know? yeah, But then yeah, i think yeah. if you're in that position you'll be faced with like oh i can't make ends meet if you know if i actually pay fairly because mm -hmm. it's probably really hard to run a studio uh yeah i mean yeah again you have to depend yeah it depends right like uh how successful they do end up becoming or not right sure yeah how many how many and even when you so, become successful like how much do you have to water it down to become successful yeah right they talk about that like for us hobby was talking right. about that we're like 
like karate used to be really lethal, mm -hmm. you know, and then now anyone can get a karate black belt. You just got to be there for like three years. Mm -hmm. Like there's even black belt programs where it's like, we'll put you on this program and in three years you will get a black belt because we will spoon feed everything to you. You just got to pay into it. Right. You know, so it's like, it's like even if you try and solve that problem, it's almost like nothing solvable, you know, <laughs> from that perspective because it's like, okay, I'm getting paid jack as an instructor. Let me open my own studio. Oh, wait, I actually need to pay instructors less because I can't make ends meet. Okay, or we could just offset it by giving <laughs> crappier programs, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and then it's like, well, then something's got to give, mm -hmm. you know. It's almost like our society, how it's like built off of oil and it's like we're, we're destined for like destruction, mm -hmm. you know, because we do things, but we don't think proactively in advance enough we just think enough to be like okay this will fix it for the time being or at least while i'm in office right you know people do that like it's like okay well it's not my problem because i'm only going to be at this job for five years and then i'll move on you know mm -hmm. but that's how we got in this mess nobody's forward thinking nobody's trying to build like longevity everyone's trying to get like a quick fix yeah yeah maybe it's greed greed is the reason I, why I was we about have to say, yeah I think greed is is that thing. <laughs> Why we have the veil, yeah. you know. But we we're all greedy. So like the thing is that people are like oh, people should just be less greedy. But it's like we're all greedy though. Yeah, it's hard. You know, it's like yeah. if like you could have like maybe a one or two. Like there will be people that are not like that, but it's going to be difficult to prove that. Like to make sense to a whole lot. Like it, there's going to be always someone that's going to be greedy, right? Like yeah. It's, yeah. It's like that DMX thing where he's like, why would you want to be happy all the time? Happy people just get taken advantage of yeah. being happy all the time. Yeah. You know, like, oh, he stole my money. Oh, positivity though, it's okay. <laughs> but it's like, no, you should be angry. Yeah. Stole your money. Yeah. I don't know what else. Like, there's, that's, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like, like the true, this is why I like what, what Buddha said. Like, Buddha is very, Actually, I don't even know if he said this. This is just probably marketing again. Yeah. But allegedly he said this. It's like, if you believe something will give you happiness, go and do that. If it does, keep doing that. It's great. Good for you. But if it doesn't, then you need to reassess and then like move in a different manner. Yeah, but it also you know? depends like it, on the current state of the world, in a sense. Like, what yeah, kind totally of jobs not. are available? Is it not totally. Yeah, that's another thing. It's like, maybe. So it's like, in the book Outliers, it's like, all these successful people that you see they're just in the right place at the right time with the right skills mm -hmm. so it's like the the lesson is work hard so that when your opportunity does come you can take it right but at the same time you have to be okay with the fact that the opportunity might not come mm -hmm. you know? yeah 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 there and every every like famous rich person always says like like there is if you ask me how i got here is like there is no path you yeah. have to like make it yourself yeah you know that's probably the biggest illusion of actually no like this is like on a superficial level this is the biggest illusion it's like you think there's a path but there's no path you know the yeah. one the ones that everyone has walked well that's why we're in mediocre positions mm -hmm. you know but if you really want greatness you have to like claim your own stake by moving in but there's yeah it's a lot more it's a lot more difficult because there's no single path right right so you don't know what would work for you in some sense uh, like it'll take you you'll, there will be a lot of hardships in the way on the way for sure totally i agree i agree yeah. and it's like it, going back to bombshell it's like okay you want to be famous you gotta do this mm -hmm. right you know what i mean it's like but them choosing to do it it's like is this the tax we just pay mm-hmm you know, like sexual harassment's terrible. Like, yeah. like uh, the yeah. Bikram thing. Yeah. That's that's terrible. He like raped those girls. Mm -hmm. That's not cool. But if, if you're given the choice, like the head of the Fox News guy, it's like just. I mean, like, okay, that's so negative because everyone's like, oh, if you just say just say no, it's like you're undermining the girl. I'm sure she was in a position that she couldn't say no to. Whatever, whatever. I'm not her. Who knows? But like, there are certain situations where it's like, if you want this, you have to pay this thing. Mm -hmm. And it might not be monetary. It might be in, like, favors. Yeah. Are you willing to do that? So it's like, even that's a reality of the situation. It's like, are you willing to go all the way for what you want? And mm -hmm. a lot of people say, I am, but it's like, 
are you really? <laughs> you know, and, and and will you like who you become by the end of it? Right. You know, like that's a big one. It's like that. Um, there's, it just reminded me of like those lines. I think we used to play as a kid. Like, what would you do for a million dollars? Like, oh, true. Yeah. Would you do that? Would you do this? I remember. I <laughs> oh, forgot about that. Yeah, that is a thing. That it's basically what it is. <laughs> that is basically what it is. Yeah. We should do this for. We're all still just kids, man. Yeah. Like that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, we bring up the most obscure things, and then, uh, like, would you do that? Would you? <laughs> yeah, it's like, how bad do you want? It? Okay, cut off your arm. Right. You know, like, would you do it? Yeah. And it's like. You... So that's kind of like I guess where you build your integrity or not. Totally, totally. To yeah, I agree. I agree. It's like you have to know what you want and don't want from this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good place to to put it. Yeah, you got to know what you want and don't want out of this world, because then then you can like navigate more freely. Yeah, you know, like no, uh, not freely, because I don't believe in freedom. No, like in with some authority. Uh, yeah, yeah, with your own authority, like no sense of like, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, like having that integrity and not being um they they call it virtues yeah so like but uh, so in like martial arts the prosciutto mm -hmm. so it's like you have to know what you stand for right you yeah. know and like one of them is like virtues and like the virtue is like what you can and cannot tolerate mm -hmm. you know and it's like yeah that's not authority like here, here's my perspective on freedom and sovereignty. I was like talking to Tara about this yesterday. And I was like, this is so true. If you, people are like, I'm free, I'm sovereign, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, you say that as you pay taxes though. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what freedom are you talking about, bro? Right. You know, freedom isn't free. Authority is though. You could like have your own authority. You're like, I, I'm actively choosing to do this. Freedom isn't free. <laughs> it's not though, right? Like, was that me? No, uh, maybe. But it's funny because of the word free and freedom. Yeah, it's an illusion. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, another word for it is like fidelity, which is like choice. Like you can choose. Like it's like, okay, you don't technically have to mm -hmm. pay taxes, but you pay them because you live in this country. Yeah. But you're not free. I'm not saying you're not free. You don't have freedom. But you have fidelity, where it's like you have choice. Yeah. Yeah. But even on that level, I don't even believe in choice. So mm -hmm. it's like things are just playing out. I'm just like, we're going on the very <laughs> superficial level. Like, we're not going high level because at the end of the day, I believe that everything's already predetermined. But like on the illusion level, yes, you have like some semblance of choice. That's like, I can choose not to pay these taxes. Right. I can choose not to do that favor in order to get on TV. Right, I mean, there are consequences. But there are consequences. Uh, yeah. It's like, okay, we'll put you in jail if you don't pay taxes. Okay, you won't be on TV if you don't do this. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to live with those consequences? Right. Or are you, are you willing to live with who you'll become if you decide to do those things? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So how best to live your life, Ish? Uh, best? I don't know, man. Do whatever, it doesn't matter at the end anyways. That's true, yeah. Because at the end of the day, we'll all be dead. That's kind of harsh, but yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's where you're going with that one. Yeah. That's, that's the ultimate Zen reel right there. It's like, it's like yeah, like pierce through the veils of illusion. In in uh, yogic text, they call them mayas, yeah. right? Like the illusion of something, right? Right. And like, yeah, at the end of the day, you're going to die. So it's like, do it, don't do it. Like whatever. if you look at it, I like, if I look at it like as a... It'll always be an experience. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's just how I view it. And then, in in the long term, it's like in, in universe time, it's like it doesn't matter. Totally, yeah. And I feel like being poor, like when people are like, I have heard this before, and I agree with it. Like being poor is a mindset. Mm -mm, yeah, you know, I like obviously on a BS like level, it's like no, you can't ball out. But it's just like just don't think of yourself as poor. Mm -hmm. you know it's like okay i can only afford this right now you know yeah like if you just told yourself i have a million dollars in the bank but if i spend over this amount i won't be a millionaire anymore mm -hmm. 
you know right you know it's like it's like a concept like this idea of like being rich is a concept yes i fizz like I remember for what, yeah. what was that thing we said before it's like money doesn't buy happiness money affords happiness yeah it's like choices it, yeah choices it allows you to like do things yeah. right but like that's what dave Chappelle said what money affords happiness yeah it's like uh it's like you can choose to put them in private school like having you know better education or something like that like that's what yeah, money just opportunities. brings. Yeah, 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 that's what money brings you. But like, what's the, there's no difference in like what he was meaning was saying was like there's no difference in like. But but like, let's say 50 you have million or hundred million. Let's say you make ten thousand dollars a year and you need food stamps and like you got to pay for all this stuff, whatever, whatever. Yeah. It's like, just imagine you have a million and ten thousand dollars in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's like if you dip below this ten thousand dollars, you won't be a millionaire anymore. Right. You know, so that alleviates your idea of being poor. It's like, no, I'm not poor. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to break my millionaire streak yeah but these are just lies we tell ourselves obviously you know <laughs> just like just like the lies of like if i'm rich and famous all my sorrows will go away yeah 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 you ever hear that that thing where it's like if you make seventy five thousand dollars a year like that's the like it's the key number for happiness that's a household income, yes. Oh, house. Oh, really? Yeah, Explain this to me. Income. I thought it was a personal. I've been shooting for seventy five myself because it's like okay, that's no. As apparently, household, everyone's gonna be happy. So as a, oh, as a household income, yeah. Oh, okay. I think they say that as household income. Okay, cool. Because because like with what I have right now, I'm like, do I really need seventy five? Like, I don't get it. Like, what do people want with this? Like, what can you just no? Do? It's it's to as as a combined oh, okay income. that makes way more sense to me now <laughs> okay cool whenever like, they use, we both whenever make 75 they, yeah, whenever we're, they, like, yeah, we're when, balling out too hard right now whenever they use the word household it means two people okay okay yeah yeah so like which which means like yeah you'll generally live a pretty good life and yeah so two people with thirty five thousand dollars per year mm -hmm. that's like seventy thousand yeah you could do it yeah yeah yeah. It's fine, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's weird. Weird world we're living in. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So moral of the story, don't go and try and be rich and famous. Because when you get there, you might not want to have been there. Or liked who you've become. Or liked who you've become. Because you might have done some craziness. Yeah. And it also sounds like a weird world. Like all the people that talk about like the rich world, like uh, the Brian Singer with like the little boys in the the pool, and, like they made the water red. Was it Brian Singer? I don't want to throw you under the bus. <laughs> like uh, I don't know what they're talking about. I was listening to like uh, like the pedophilia that goes on and like the I don't know this red pool thing. What? Oh, there's like this picture of like the guy who did X Men. First is Brian Singer, right? Oh, oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Brian Singer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just Google it. It's <laughs> not me. Who he was. Just throw it out there. Okay. Fun fact. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like he has this picture of like him and a bunch of like young looking boys and they're all swimming in a pool. He made the pool like red. Mm. They showed it on Joe Rogan and I was like, it's a little weird. Oh. You know? But this is like this is the way you get into or like Bill Cosby being a rapist, allegedly a rapist. You know, mm -hmm. and this is the world mm -hmm. we're we're riding in, you know? Yeah. DMX was talking about how he has a cocaine problem. Mm. Right? Yeah. So it's like, would you even want those friends to be around you? You know? Right. It's like at the end of the day, it's like, we're all rich and famous, but we're doing craziness right now. Mm hmm Yeah. It seems, a, <clears throat> seems like it's all for my entertainment, though. I enjoy it. What would you say? What would you say? What? It seems like it's all for my entertainment. Like, I just find it funny. As a consumer, yeah, I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, isn't that all what we're all doing at the end of the day? Yeah. Like, that's that's like the the epitome of every realization. Like, I know I've said this before, but you brought me to that. Like, if you have nihilism, the ultimate thing you could do is entertain yourself, because at the end of the day, nihilistic people realize that nothing matters. So it's like, if nothing matters, let me just entertain myself. Mm. You know, this is gonna play itself out. You know. Right. I'm really jiving with that, like Instagram description i have of like entertaining myself in the interim between worlds because it's like we're gonna die and then live again you know in some mm -hmm. other form so while i'm here it's like while we're all here might as well just derive some enjoyment
Yeah. But maybe that's what those people were thinking too, with like the red pool and the you know, I'm just trying to have some fun. <laughs> My young working boys in a mm. red pool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right, I'm just saying it's like Well, as know. as a society we have accepted it as wrong. Right. I don't, that's the that's the insanity part to me. It's like if you actually read history, like they've done crazier stuff. Yeah. You know? But you know, we we forget because nobody reads anymore. So, or nobody like wants to learn about history. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. When are we gonna watch the nineteen seventy four? No, it's nineteen seventeen. That was oh, okay. like many see, many years. Ago. See how bad I am with these like guesses. Like okay, nineteen seventeen. Seventy four. These like movie <laughs> names are too difficult for me. It's, I guess, yeah. Well, if you are if you haven't really looked into it like I did, so I guess it's understandable. I know Star Wars Episode Nine. Okay. So I'm just, just kidding. So, uh, yeah, so that's coming out next week? January 10th, you said? Uh, I think so. Something like sometime, yeah. Cool. Soon. So if it comes out, we'll check that out. It should be sick because it's a one-take movie. Oh, it's a one not one take it's impossible to make one take it's yeah. a one shot yeah single shot yeah yeah there's no there's no cuts apparently yeah i'm interested to see how that works. but really what that means so there there's the behind the veil that just means they're gonna do like a sweeping motion and it's just gonna cut to another scene you just won't see the cut uh you know what i mean because like you can't not cut something you're just gonna like merge two scenes together that's it well yeah i just want to see how they did it because you know we played a game that had no cuts right uh, or God of War. that had single, yeah, God of War. Yeah. I don't want to say no cuts. They do make and uh, they do take. Uh, I think there was like one time they did, but there was not a cut. It was like uh, uh, using that transition method as a cut. Right, right, right. What's that mean? You just hide the cuts. So yeah. is it really a no cut thing? You know, what I mean? it's like a, it's like a hidden. No, that's what I want to cuts. see. Like how it's like an art piece in a way, right? Just I want to see how it's done because it's technic in in a normal movie you would see like a lot of cuts, like your face, this person you're talking, and cut to this person. Oh talking. right, yeah, yeah, you're so not you're seeing saying. anything like that. So it's a lot of it is done on single shot, in a sense. Like I feel like single shot's like a misnomer. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, like yeah. like hidden trends because they can't even cool film like because they when they film it certain scenes, I mean, you can't stop from from it going from day and night. So you have to like start again the next day totally yeah, and yeah. uh like what i was reading into like what would happen like if the sun came out it's too too bright so they had to wait until the cloudy again and right, then right away right. start up the the scene Let, let's call it seamless sequencing sure yeah and yeah, that that'd be amazing if that took off somebody hears it like we should call it seamless sequencing yeah i don't think that's catchy no seamless, but it's, single it's shot more, is more sing, single shot it's it's going to mislead you into thinking rich people are happy. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Same thing. Same thing. No, it's just words. If you really looked into it, then you'll know more about it. But what I'm saying is nobody looks into things anymore. Yeah. Well, Hashtag their look issue. into it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, until next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. 2020 is here. Oh, wait. We didn't even talk about this. Um, World War Three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Allegedly, so not allegedly. I, I mean, it's not. It's just the thinking or the idea of having a World War Three. But like, I don't know that. Tear uh, out, tear out this pop up that said like Twitter is convinced that World War Three is going to happen. Okay, and I was like, oh, it's well, weird. that makes sense. I mean, people think, right? Yeah, totally. But see, there you go. Behind the veil, man. It's like, who's really saying that? Yeah, it's the people. Yeah, it's like no. But you know, it's funny. It's like. We don't get the full story. Remember when I saw like, oh, Trump okay to bombing and they kill this dude. Oh, he's like, and then you were like, actually, they've been going back and forth for quite some time. This is not. Yeah. This is completely expected. Blah blah. blah. It's like, oh, well, not in, the, in the sense of expected, but it's like uh, there has been trouble already going on between these two countries. So like the fact that it happened was like, okay, I could see it. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like, see, from my perspective, I just woke up to my Instagram feed and was like, oh my god, this kid out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But you're like, no, it's been being set up for a while. If you paid attention. Like, see, if you like, really got to understand like, what's going on, then it's, it would be like, yeah, I, I can see this How would it play out? Yeah, to yeah, totally. It's like it's a logical progression. Yeah. But see, that's that's the whole Zen real philosophy of like, look look into it, bro. You mm -hmm. know, like you got to see why things are the way it is, you know? Right. 
not don't just take it at face value you know yeah and uh i just saw an asteroid is like coming close to earth mm-hmm. you saw it too no 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 oh okay okay i was like okay <laughs> yeah 2020 oh nice. we ain't playing around in this decade i mean we have had an asteroid one i think last year too or the year before so but you know what's funny like if you look at like 2000 was that of the world 2012 is that of the world <laughs> okay 2020 we gotta repackage it resell it end of the world i haven't heard the end of the world for 2020 yet oh i it's where we got different feeds man we double tap on different things we see different things uh, yeah that's, yeah, how, that's how algorithms work look at that you gotta look into it it's algorithms it's not really it's like curated content if all i look at is ponies i'm gonna get more ponies i think the world's made of ponies mm -hmm. but if you double tap negativity or conspiracies mm -hmm. that's all you're gonna get right so we'll leave you with this beware your double taps <laughs> double tap this i don't really like anything anyway so <laughs> okay I don't know, I just... But even if you don't, don't double tap, here's the craziest. Even if you there don't you double tap, yeah. they're going to take the amount of time you spent observing a post. Yeah. So you don't even need to double tap. You just need to look at it. Yeah. Watch what you look at. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I only use Twitter, so... And you know, you know who also said, watch what you look at? Buddha. The Yamas and the Yamas. Oh, okay. You got to manage what you intake because it will affect your reality mm. perennial wisdom we've known this for quite some time <laughs> yeah that's all i'm saying all right till next week take it easy peace bye bye